had to cut the line there. I figured I'll show how I tie these on. And uh, one thing, I, when I bought this Leatherman tool, it's a smaller, this is the Blast. I don't think they make them anymore, several years ago. Came with scissors. I thought, I'd never use those scissors, but I tell you, fishing, I use them all the time. Mostly with the lures and the line. So I've got this little swirly tail grub. I run it through the eye. Got my reading glasses on, make it easier to see. It holds not for the for the weak. Okay, so I've got it there. A little bump. And I'm turning it about five or six times. Then I'm take the live in, run it through the hole up above the notch. Then I take the live in and run it through the hole at the top, the little loop I just formed at the top. So I turn about five or seven times into a double loop de loop type thing. Through the bottom, then through the top. Grab it, pull it through. You can see, I don't know if it's a clear line, but it creates like a little, and it snugs up right to the hook, to the eye there. Fix that out. Another use. Cut this line here. Not too close, but right up. Maybe it was a quarter inch, not even quite a quarter inch. Don't want it to come loose in the fish's mouth. A lot of times I'll take that and I'll add a just a granny knot on top of it as a safety knot. I didn't that time, but hope it don't come off. But if I get a fish good enough to take that off, I'd be happy with a good bite, especially if I get it on film here. Well, in the trees, got my backsliding paddle. Push off. Nice. Take another turn around the cove here. See if we get anything. And at the mouth of it right here. Let me see if I can get anything. Out in the wind a little bit more. swim action here. It's important I had to cut off a bit of line not to throw it overboard. I remember in my younger days people used to throw it overboard like crazy. But that's plastic. You don't want to keep it in the water. Maybe that's the master educator coming out at me again. Leave no trace. One of my goals, one of the reasons I started my Going Wild YouTube channel was to help spread Leave No Trace, switch glasses here, Leave No Trace principles among the butch, bushcraft community. So like I can say before, they tend to want to hack everything up and build a log cabin out in the forest, which is cool. If it's in a spot where you're going to keep coming to, or you own the land or something, have at it if that's the case. I would too. But too many times people see things like that on YouTube and other places and read books and they go out our public lands that belong to all of us and they make a mess of it, honestly. Knowledge is power. Share the seven leave no trace principles. Learn them, live them, teach them. One of my certifications from working in the outdoor industry for so long was leave no trace trainer. Then I got master educator. Uh, lots of wilderness medicine. 
um, ACA canoe and kayak instructor. Um, what else? There's quite a lot. Um, wilderness lifeguard instructor. Got quite a bit of them. Sad that four circles closed down due to a. I think there's some gray areas there, but CRC Healthcare made the decision. I'm not sure what led to it. But now most wilderness therapy has come under fire. And I understand adolescents not being happy to be there. It's not their idea to go there. And I worked a year with adolescents, but after a year, they asked you to commit for a year. So I committed for my year in our sister company, Seuss of the Carolinas. Did a year. And after that, I decided to go back to work with the adults. 18 to 32, pretty much. It says 28 if you look it up, but I've had clients 32 years old working there. And there was things about the adolescents that I didn't really agree with you know um, sometimes it was like a prison um, some some of the students they called them some of them needed to be there some of them didn't need to be there but now you see all kinds of lawsuits and people complaining about it and having to poop in a bucket and things like that it's just the way it was Next thing you know, they'll be suing the prison system, which a lot of them did come from jail. Court mandated some kind of. But after a year of doing that, you have to worry about them running off on you. Middle of the night, things like that. Some of the precautions they would make, they would. Just thought somebody would run off. They would take their boots and not let them have their boots overnight. So at least they can't run fast. And uh, they didn't have headlamps. They didn't have lights. And when I first got over to the adults, they, the adults spawned off the adolescents. But it was a lot like adolescent treating adults like adolescents for a while. But we had an opportunity to have like a nulls that helps people with addictions, which I thought was pretty cool. National Outdoor Leadership School, that is. I'm just kind of drifting just right, so I'm kind of fishing on the leeward side here. Opposite of my drift. Oh, this would be windward. Windward, because the wind's in my face. But working with the adults, I liked it a lot. It had its moments, frustrations, scary times, evacuations, appendicitis, things like that. Sometimes you would evacuate for appendicitis and it'd be nothing more than constipation. <laughs> but in the field, you can't decide. You can't determine between which is which. No x-rays, nothing like that. So you have to assume the worst. You don't want to wait and have it rupture in the field. So you take the cautious approach and if it can be a appendicitis, you assume it's appendicitis and get them out of there into a hospital. But I have had appendix burst as soon as we got them to the hospital. Oh, just short. Let's see if I can pull it loose. Yep, nice. I like to crawl right off the bank. If something like that.
been a good day out here fishing. I can hear the birds. I don't know if y'all can hear that. Like 10 minutes. That's like 28 minutes of fishing. Fishing footage. I remember back in my younger days of skydiving, people would film people jumping out of planes and they would have this whole big camera hooked to the side of their tape to the side of their helmet. And nowadays it's so much easier. You got the small GoPros and things like that and hats off to the people that did it in the old days with VHS. They were they were good. I'm not sure how much of this footage I'll use. I'm sure nobody wants to sit and watch 30 minutes of talking and fishing. But I'm heading out to, uh, I've been busy lately, busy with work. I'm, I still work. I don't make money off of YouTube. So maybe someday we'll see. But I work as a personal trainer these days, helping people lose weight and get in shape, get some exercise. But I'm heading to um, Bushcraft Gathering in Kentucky on March 15th, the weekend, the 15th, 16th, and 17th, I think. So I've got a table set up there. I'll be selling some things I'm making, bow drill sets, maybe some hand reels I've been making on my pole lathe and uh, maybe even some cups and bowls I've made on there. We'll see if I get them good enough before then. But um, if you're there, stop by and say hi. I'll be sitting there with a going wild banner in the table. I think I'm on the inside of the building. I'm not sure what the weather's going to be. so it might be good to have the inside building location. I have to paddle after this cast. What else can we talk about? I play a bit of guitar. I do that a lot. I don't know if you've heard my intro, but that's me on guitar and playing that. I first started playing that tune sitting in a field waiting for pickup with four circles. One spring day, I think it was, or a warm day, waiting for a van to show up, giving us a ride back to base after eight days out in the field. It's always a good feeling getting off work. And it was a good feeling getting on work that way because I was excited for the people getting off work. It was very good. I worked with some really good people. Some of them were a little hippie-ish, but that's all right. <laughs> they were still good people. I used to call it hippie mumbo-jumbo, some of the things I'd hear. You have to separate the truth from the hippie mumbo jumbo. Things like, um, what is it? Canola oil is from the rapeseed plant. Looked it up, did my research, none of it true. It's from a canola flower. But you hear all kinds of things. It's a little close to Asheville up in western North Carolina. Bunch of hippies up there. <laughs> I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I like them. <laughs> They're different. To them, I'm different. 
But that was the good thing about four circles. It brought in people from a lot of different backgrounds. Some of us military, some of us just spent a lot of time out in the woods, some of us hippies. Pretty cool. Everybody had something to share. I'm going to do one more cast. I just had a low battery light come on. One more cast. On film, that is. On camera. On phone. These days. Make it swim. Drags that pretty light. If a fish hits it, you'll hear this is pretty cool. Well, this is JB with Go On Wild saying, Get outside and go wild. <laughs>